Wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> this is getting more popular every week and right at nine o'clock too. Hey folks. Get an audio check. Sound good to me. Yeah, we can hear you. Everybody's so quiet. I like that. All right. Um, Slack, oh, sorry, hack uh, link posted if folks can just uh, check in. Um, do I see Dan here yet? Yes, great. Okay. Um, folks a minute, although a lot of people here already. So uh, I'll hand off to Dan in a second. I'll do a quick intro to how this came to be. Um, Dan um, is at Google and has been working on some of the uh, secure, so secure, what the hell does SSF stand for now? Secure Software Foundation. Is that what it is? Uh the Open Source Security Foundation. Open Source Security Foundation, thank you. Uh, and I've been tracking it also with the um, uh, notary and registry work just to kind of keep the, the pieces combined. And Dan had reached out on um, a mailing list and it got forwarded to me and we basically were able to connect um, on some various efforts. And surprise, surprise, it looks like Dan you know, uh, has also taken a very similar approach that what we were doing with the notary work, um, specifically the NV2 client around signing, and was actually also hitting up some of the limitations that we're working on now with the registry part. So I thought it was a great idea for him to come and join because as with many of these efforts, um, there's they just become this intertangling of dependencies that people get blocked on uh, because they're just in so many places. And I'm hoping that the work that we've been focused on recently to get the reference types in, in registries will kind of unblock this last piece that uh, Dan's been working on. And we can talk about the synergies and um, go from there. So with that, let me hand off to Dan and uh, take it away. Sure, can everybody hear me? Well, I'll try to share my screen and hopefully that works. Um, I'm gonna do entire screen. Okay, is this up? Everybody can see? Yep. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll just give a little bit of background here. So my name is Dan Lawrence. Um, I'm an engineer at Google. So I've been in our uh, cloud and security organizations for a while now doing a whole bunch of containery things. Um, in particular, my team is responsible for producing a whole bunch of container images that are used all over the place. And it's been bothering me for a while that I can't sign them um, in any real way. So you got a couple different tools that kind of are trying to sign images um, with the existing registry API today. Um, and after talking to Steve, I kind of refactored out this one and extracted it into a standalone tool to demo for everybody now. Um, basically just want to sign images with a you know, public private key pair, um, nothing more complicated than that. And then have a way to distribute those signatures alongside the images to people that want to use them. Um, so I named it Cosign, thought that was a little clever. Um, you can kind of show how it works here in a terminal too, but the basic flow is similar to a lot of tools like MiniSign or Signify or some of those other minimal artifact signing tools if people have seen those. Um, you can generate a key pair um, and then this is kind of the basic flow. You can do cosign sign with your um, private key and it signs whatever container image is at that spot in, in any registry um, and uploads the signature there next to it. So I can kind of show how this works in. So I will sign. Um, this is uh, going to decrypt my private key. Signature here. Uh, this should work with any registry today. I wanted something that would work with basically the existing APIs. Um, uh, so it uploaded that signature here. Now we can do a verify, same key, and it'll print out any matching signatures on that image. 
Um, so there's a couple of different ones here um, because you can sign something multiple times. I've been doing it this morning a few times. So each one of these is a uh, payload that got signed and verified with that public key that I specified. Um, for the format here, this is, if you're familiar with it, this is the Red Hat simple signing payload format. Um, this is how Red Hat signs container images today and a bunch of our other tools at Google use the same payload format, uh, like our binary authorization uh, service. Um, that's not really coupled or part of this system though. You can sign kind of any payload you want to. And if we jump back to the readme, um, all the commands are decoupled. So you can generate a payload, sign it with a different algorithm if you don't want to use ED25519, which I'm using here. Uh, let's see where that is. Yeah, so if you want to upload something in a different format, say not simple signing, um, you can just do cosine sign and skip the upload. Um, you can sign a different payload uh, format and then upload that here. Um, you can just generate the payload format and sign that with something else and then have cosine upload it and store it in the registry for you. So you want to use OpenSSL or some kind of cloud KMS. Um, all of that is possible here. And I've got some docs showing how to do most of these things. Um, yeah, different public keys. Uh, there's no kind of PKI or um, any policy language or anything like that as part of this tool. Um, this tool just does signing with one private key and verifies with one public key. So if you want to build something more complicated to distribute the keys, um, that would be kind of a layer on top of this. Um, you can download all the signatures yeah, with this example if you wanted to verify them with some different, more complicated uh, key ring system shows how the signatures uh, look um, and the key format if you want to use the cryptography that's in here um, and then john johnson who i think is on the call put together this awesome diagram showing exactly how this works and how we store things in the registry today using the existing apis and specifications um, but the basic trick to do that today without needing any of the new features you've been discussing is that we just stick them in something that looks like an existing um, image or uh, OCI uh, manifest index um, and stick that next to the image that we signed and give it a predictable name so that way we can find it. So that works as if you're signing um, image one, we take the digest for that image like here. Um, and then we turn this digest into a tag. So we create a new object that's stored in the registry with a predictable name. So that digest gets turned into um, something like this. So this looks like a digest, but it's actually a tag because we dropped the at sign. So that's how for any object in the registry, we can find where all of the signatures should be located. Oh, was someone gonna say something? Sorry. No, I was just, I was snickering. I, I, it's oh. very ingenious to, uh, you know, to <laughs> It's just you never never doubt what ways you could hack in something to get it to work, and, and, I, and I, they say that in the most you know respectful way of just like it's it, sometimes you just get unblocked through brute force and that works well. Yep. Um, we can so do I, much better, but it's a good yeah. way to prove that it works and go like this is obviously something we should fix because everything else works. Exactly. This was all kind of like a thought experiment to see how close I could get to a working system without needing to ask for any changes in the specifications. Um, so this works um, with that naming convention and those caveats. Um, the other kind of hacky thing, I guess, that would be nice to get changed in the registry is um, it's a little bit racy. Um, like I said before, uh, you can store multiple signatures on any image. Like you can have anybody sign it as many times as you want with a bunch of different keys. Um, so as we append into this uh, object, it's actually like a read, append, write. So if multiple people are doing this at the same time, you might lose some and you kind of have a last right wins situation. Um, I don't think that that's handled at all by the registry API today. Um, I've only tested it with GCP's you know, GCR and um, package.dev. Uh, registries, but this uses um, our you know, pretty well-tested Go container registry client, which works across tons of registries. So it should work because you know, I'm not really using any fancy or special features with other registries, but it'd be good to try this out. I like uh, your uh, who's using it reference. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully nobody's using this yet, um, but I do want to start using it on some images uh, soon. Um, yeah, so any questions here? Um, and I know, John, you had a couple of things you wanted to say, too, about the kind of hacks and everything we put together. 
How do I stop screen sharing? I, I can yell about stuff. Um, Go the, for it. the raciness is fixable uh, using existing HTTP semantics. I brought this up last week in uh, the OCI call. And everyone seemed amenable to fixing race conditions like that. Uh, but I mean, the, this the scheme for like storing uh, via naming convention is also bad. Uh, and so, I mean, we can fix that racing convention, but now we have just a bad thing that works instead of it's racy. Um, so, so there's definitely better ways to do like discovery of signature artifacts. But uh, until we have them, I like this one. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, like Dan mentioned, you know, we can sign arbitrary things. Um, the, the Red Hat simple signature stuff is an existing thing that I like. Um, what what I would also propose is just signing a descriptor, uh, an OCI descriptor with some annotations on it, because that's an existing thing that clients should know how to handle uh, and, and is effectively just a pointer to an artifact. And so if you wanted to sign a tag, that's a pretty reasonable representation of one in the registry. Uh, I think that's that's all I thought was worth mentioning. Cool. Yeah, as long as the payload resign has the digest of the image in it, then it's uh, you know pretty good and you've signed that image. Um, you can add in all sorts of other crazy annotations and things like the tag itself that start to get you know weird. Um, not weird, but you can build up stronger um, systems on top of that if you kind of put the tag and the digest in there together. Um, you can get different types of claims. Um, I started doing a quick thought experiment, and I think you could actually build something like Tough on top of this primitive as well. Um, you know, Tough is just collections of things, and we're signing arbitrary JSON, which contains collections of things, or could co contain collections of things. So I think you could also publish kind of full update framework um, snapshots and things like that in the registry for storage, and then sign those as well with different sets of keys. So I don't think this precludes any of the more complicated um, update uh, framework stuff. Um, but I haven't actually tried it out myself, so there could be something I'm missing still. So I guess just to end it, um, is anybody else doing anything like this? You know, tricking registries into storing signatures and using them to find them later? Is this useful to anyone? Um, any comments? Are you horrified by this? <laughs> Nothing? Hey, this is Andy, first time joining the meeting. So, hey, everybody. Uh, I do have a quick question based on what you were just saying, Dan. I'm curious uh, about what y'all are thinking longer term for if we need to do changes to any of the OCI specs and registry specs to not have this be you know, something that's sitting alongside. Um, yeah, I'll... It's probably the best for John and Steve and the other people on the OCI uh, calls each week. But I guess if, if I could have one wish list feature, it would be some way to set up these back references. So some way to upload something and say that it is attached to this image without changing that image and without having to do a hacky naming convention. And then, of course, a way to find all of the things attached with an image. I think that's the one kind of primitive that doesn't exist today that would have made this a lot less hacky. So th this is the part where the, the two efforts kind of really converge. So first, welcome, Andy. Um, who are you with? Like, what group are you with? Uh, I work at VMware, and I'm awesome. the tech tech lead for our supply chain tools effort. Great. All right. So we've been working with a bunch of the VMware folks. In fact, they recently over the weekend were asking about how to integrate some of the scanning API stuff, which kind of correlates to all of these listing APIs and discovery as well. So I see a lot of this coming together. Um, the back reference is something that we've been, you know, working on for a bit now. Um, the NV2 prototype, actually, which is a, uh, a temporary fork, it's a prototype fork of distribution to prove out some of these concepts that we can get that NV2 client experience working. And it looks very similar to what Dan did. Um, we didn't hack in the tag because, uh, let me, I'll share my screen because I'll show why that starts to become a problem. Uh, share screen screen this one okay so this is a, a pr for the uh, a new artifact manifest that is designed exactly to take care of those references um, so if you notice here a, a notary signature which could just as well be the cosine signature and that's that's another interesting tangent that we've always talked about is having multiple signature types um, you know, whether it be the Red Hat signature or was what the original one was, or now, a, you know, a Google cosine signature. Um, I think there's a little bit of a, it, 
it, I think it would be a failure if we didn't have a standard that people could, you know, have better, if you will, and compete with stuff. But we want to have some standard because our goal is to move things across registries. But I digress. The idea is that you can store anything, whether it be a notary signature or an SBOM. The problem that these things are, they're independent artifacts. Sure, I can stuff it in a registry, but how do I link them together? In the current NV2 prototype, you basically submit them both, and then there's a completely separate API that you call that says, please link these things together. Really just a different hack, quite honestly. What we've been trying to do is come up with a, a way, a manifest that you could submit to the registry that handles these references. Because the, let me I'll scroll up forward here a little bit. The problem with the tag listing um, as an ex a problem with using tags, for instance, is this. If you look at a repository, and you were to look at all the, the things in it, if you were to expand it completely, you would see layers. But of course, we don't show layers in a repo listing because the layers are known to be part of the image. So those kind of go away. But the same token, would you show a signature or an SBOM? Maybe you want to show a CNAV or Helm chart, you know, whether in the same repo or not, is, I was kind of taking a little liberty here. The point is, is that there's certain things that you want to show and certain things that you don't. Whereas if you look at it, pivoted a little bit, if we could establish these relationships, then we could say the image, which of course we're not showing the layers, has a signature, has an SBOM, maybe even has some metadata on it. And now you're looking at it as one entity and we don't need tags. We don't actually want tags on them because tags are meant for, here's the things I deploy and all of that other goo is reference data. And then of course you could kind of do the expando and expand this out and obviously you can Kind of see this is kind of hacked together just as an example. So the the work we've been doing here is to do just that. A manifest for an OCI image knows how to point to layers. A notary signature knows how to point to its layers. We've called them blobs now. The question is how do you do the double direction? So a WordPress chart defines its layers, that's fine. And now when you have a notary signature, it or anything in the registry that supports this new artifact, it supports its content just like this, but it also can store a back pointer. Because this focuses on one of the main goals we've had from uh, Notary V2 is we do not require a changing of the digest or the tag of the thing you're signing. But we need to be able to move it across registries. So there's an interesting double thing there. So. This latest proposal, and then this just kind of elaborates on more of the references, right? A, a WordPress image that's got a notary signature, an SBOM document, but a Helm chart that can reference this as a weak reference. Um, that gets into a, a bunch of other stuff. Let's focus on, so if we look at an OCI image, that's the standard thing, right? This is just a standard OCI image format and layers. And there's your um, descriptor. If we scroll down, what we've done is this new OCI artifact manifest. So we're suggesting a third manifest get added to the registry because registries have to support at least two, but they can support more. There's nothing in the spec that says they couldn't support more. And we've, for the last couple of years, have been jacking in stuff into the OCI manifest and trying index. And we just, they're just there's a fidelity and compatibility. We keep on creating weirdness about it. So the idea here is let's, let those exist as, as they are and have one that's more generic that can support notary, cosine images, helm charts, uh, NIDIS formats, and all kinds of things. So all we've done here is we've changed layers to blobs. This was always a pet peeve of folks. So this is no different, right? Anything in here, this manifest says this is what makes up the content. But what we also have is a manifest collection. Let me skip to this example, actually. I'll talk about the subtle difference between the two. So this one says this notary V2 signature or cosine object, doesn't matter, says it's pointing at this digest in the registry. So this is that back pointer that we, we need. So by submitting this to the registry, it's one put, obviously the blobs get put, that's the standard thing. But instead of submitting this artifact and then telling the registry, by the way, link these things together, as you're submitting this thing to the registry, you're giving it everything it needs to link together. So now we have the back pointer 
Um, and of course, we now we put the registry to have persistence and so forth on that. Um, and I'm sure there'll be varied implementations. We've done this with blob storage in the NV2 prototype here. So if I go to distribution, you'll see there's a PR here that has this hacked in implementation that uh, Averall's done. But this is just another hack of what Dan was kind of doing. This is, again, to prove the concept, but we just took it to the next level, proved it in the registry. And this is the formalization of that uh, proof. And then, of course, we just need to have the appropriate listing APIs that says, hey, I need to get this thing out. So the idea is that I want, uh, basically, it says, give me the reference artifacts. Let me scroll all the way back up here for the WordPress uh, five image and it will because you're asking for it right you're not asking for the signature because there's lots of signatures you're saying let me know all of the reference artifacts to this WordPress image by the way please only give me the own nv2 ones because I don't want to look at the s bombs and other things I just want the nv2s and then we're also trying to work out I also only want the things that were signed by Docker or signed by Acme Rockets or Wabbit Networks. Because in the current, in this NV2 prototype, we actually bring back all the signatures and the client has to do this round trip and going, nope, not that one, nope, not that one, nope, not that one, oh, got the one I want. And that just becomes you know, a chatty API. Um, the, just the last thought, and I, I wanna get more feedback on this. Um, the reason we jump to annotations here and here we have a formalization in the manifest, is these we believe apply to all artifacts. Now, not all artifacts will necessarily use manifests or, sorry, or references. They'll use one or the other. So that if they don't, well, I guess they don't have to use one or the other, but that's the idea is you have the ability to say, I wanna link to something else, or I want to um, uh, have a weak, well, they're both links to something else, just one's a weak reference. But this, the idea is that a particular NV2 prototype wants to pivot on something. We couldn't find a good way to generalize this in a manifest that made sense. So it made sense to use annotations of being artifact specific information. So it's only the NV2 client that would actually do something with this. The problem is we want the way the, the listing API to be able to filter on that also. And it might also be, give me all the artifacts that are set to expire today because I want to go delete them. So there's a, a couple of different interesting APIs for that. Anyway, let me pause there for conversation. I'll just say most of that went over my head. Um, <laughs> but if, as long as there's some way for me to, like, you know, we can already store anything you want in a registry. That's how they work. Um, as long as there's a way for me to say that one thing that I uploaded is now attached to another thing, um, and then a way to get all of those, you know, that reverse index later, then that would be sufficient. Um, that definitely sounded, well, not sounded, but that, that was definitely way over my head though, all the other things you were mentioning. <laughs> but I also haven't been in all the OCI calls and don't understand all the other things going on. Yeah, sorry, I, um, I'll work on the, the walkthrough of it. This is some things I'm trying to figure out how to present better. So Steve, I think, did we go through the query APIs that you were thinking of? Cause that might help answer some questions. Not yet, honestly, I've been, um, I, the biggest conversation uh, has been this A and B conversation that we've been having, but that is the next thing. And that's kind of merged with John's focus on the listing APIs and now the Harbor folks are also saying, hey, we need to standardize. We would like to standardize in a way for scanners and other things to get things out. So I think we're seeing a convergence of that. Um, and I said that was, there's two things I was going to do. One, just as an update from last week, I didn't get as far as I wanted on the status email for notary. So I will work on that today and tomorrow uh, and get that out for people to review. And it'll cover just this. And maybe I can show what the current NV2 prototype does for that listing API but I, I'm, I'm nervous that'll make more randomization. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, the, this listing API and um, conversation is the next one to, to pull in the requirements here into that. 
Oh, and sorry. Brandon, sorry, where I was going with that is you guys have raised a bunch of questions over the weekend that I didn't get a chance to respond to. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, no worries. Um, I was just thinking for the, since we were using that tag interface and hijacking that with the SHAs, there, there is a lot of work that you've been doing, Steve, to say there is a way that we can query these. So you could say, show me all of the artifacts that are currently pointing to something like the, the manifest you're looking at. So you do have that back reference there. And a way to through the tag up. you're saying um i've just been I'm, I'm thinking of your your solution to the stuff that they were working on on the cosine side that there is a way we can do what cosine was doing without having to hijack the tag interface oh yeah yeah and that was the piece that dan and i talked about the most is he's basically uh, uh, there's a friend who i work with uh, john gossman he has this term gossman's rule of any good ideas implemented five times but you only know about two or three of them um, so it's, you know, a lot of the artifact work we were doing, coincidentally, the Quay folks went along the same approach, right? Um, the stuff we did with the NV2 client, Dan's basically taken a very, very similar approach um, with the cosine work. So to me, that's like, it, that tells us that we're really honing in on a good experience. Of course, we need to continue to churn on the security and, you know, we shouldn't give up on all those things. But it, when you've got multiple people coming at the same direction that didn't know about each other, that starts to have a good feeling that we're heading in the right direction. And I'm hoping the work here will unblock the stuff that Dan's doing. <laughs> to me, I still have the question of whether we wanna have tags that can point to the artifacts. And I'm thinking along the lines of say, your Helm chart, you're gonna to wanna to be able to pull that by tag. You don't wanna say, find the image that is using this Helm chart and then find the Helm chart that way. So I feel like yeah, there absolutely. is a need for um, if that, and maybe this is again where I need to continue churning on this example, um, and maybe I just need to record a, a talk or something with a slower pace to it. But if you look closely at these examples, let me just get in the right section here. You know, hope, let me go back up here. We've done exactly that. the The Helm chart does have a tag. The Helm chart does, and whether it's called dash chart doesn't matter. It could be in a, a completely different repo, but you have a WordPress chart with a tag. You have um, the CNAB has a tag. If we look at these display listings, what we're saying is there's two categories. Some are, in, and I haven't found the best words, so please help me with better words here. Um, I, I've been lately calling them enhancements. There's certain things that are just enhancing another artifact. A signature and an SBOM really have no value of their own. Their whole purpose in life is to provide additional information to another artifact, but because these are sealed, we can't crack the manifest on that without breaking the seal. So there's a category of these things, and I really want to get eventually to the metadata stuff as well, that these, in fact, the idea is if you delete the image, the thing it signs, these get deleted with it. And the same, and a CNAB is just another one of those, a Helm chart, a, a I have to look closer at the NIDA stuff. I don't completely understand the implementation to, to comment on it, but a singularity chart, you know, uh, sorry, a singularity image. Um, uh, just there's a bunch of things like that that absolutely have tags and have to reference, but there's other things that don't have any tags or you actually don't want to give it a tag because you don't want it to surface like this. And it's not just the visualization, it's the delete. And I've put, I haven't finished that part of it, um, but in here, where is that? There, I've started covering the delete uh, scenarios as well, where there's some things like you want to delete the signature in SBOM. You might, if you delete the Helm chart, you might want to delete the images it references, but you might not. So the weak reference collection, just as a way to say, here's the things that I'm referring to, and the client can use that information from the registry and decide, I do want to delete because there's a extra delete, you know, and delete, what do they call it? Delete references or something like that. But it's really up to the client to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. The part that I'm undecided on right now is whether you want to be able to have the same tag to two different artifacts and reference those by artifact type, or do we want to push that onto the user of saying the user needs to specify that the tag includes whether it is a chart or a CNAB in the tag name. Um, 
I so can putting see two different button. things in the same repo. It's basically whether you namespace your tags according to artifact type or whether you put them all in one namespace. That um, I think that ship has sailed uh, with the platform stuff. I, I don't think any registries would support that currently, and it would be kind of a large undertaking to somehow have tags namespaced by type within the same repository. We, we had this question came up with multi, uh, multi-platform images as well. And a lot of people suggested, oh, well, you know, this Windows image should have the same tag as this other image. And the way that was solved was by having, you know, one artifact that references the others and, and the client does the resolution uh, depending on which artifact it wants, if that makes any sense. It does, but even within that same example, you query a registry and say that I want the the image manifest for this tag, and it will go back on the registry itself. It will do some of that resolution and pull back, okay, here's the first manifest from that manifest list, just because it knows how those things work together. So you can specify what? which artifact type or the which content type that you want to get back from this tag query. I, I think everyone hates that, um, yeah. and that, that is a concession for old clients and not a feature to be exploited, I think. I mean, I've implemented it twice, so I, I know what you're saying, but um, I don't think anyone wants to use that going forward unless I'm wrong. It's been painful. It, I mean, the way, the, yeah. the, the way you're doing, so here's the ex original, pro not the, the original proposal from the artifacts approach which just so happens it sounds like it mimics some of the stuff that was happening with the multi-platform stuff. If I, like when I'm working on stuff and working on proposals, I do my visualizations in PowerPoint and I write my stuff in a Word doc, you know, just as an example. I'll name the two things the same thing. There's a teleport.pptx and there's a teleport.docx. I can save those in the same folder in my, you know, on my computer. So why can't I do the same thing in a registry? So we did propose that where the artifact type was a pivot, which would be very similar to the platform, uh, I couldn't have gotten a more you know, uh, negative response from people. And I'm, and I'm sure it was wrapped up in all kinds of other historical stuff. So I, I kind of realized that let me give up on that for now because it wasn't making any progress and was stalling all kinds of the other work. Whether that's something we eventually get to or not, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the multi-platform stuff or the multi-pivot in the same repo has definitely been uh, a gnarly one that I think people are chewing on. Um, as we're seeing a lot of that work, the multi-platform stuff is continuing to be problematic. Uh, it just hasn't gotten bad enough where anybody's really put a good enough investment to do anything about it yet. I, I think most registries have assumed that a tag points to one thing and to change that is hard. Um, yeah. And I don't think worth the effort when there is alternative uh, ways to accomplish the same thing. Well, the, the two downsides is that if you ever get into a situation like this, you need to either tell that, that the client is going to have to maintain this naming scheme to be able to keep things different. But I'm also thinking along the lines of um, like integrating something like Tough. If we try to pull Tough into the registry concept, they want to have some kind of consistent name that says, here's the object that points to the snapshot for everything in this repo. And so they will push something up there and they want an easy way to query that. And so we need to give them a query or we need to give them a tag name that's unique that's not going to get stepped on by something else or some other solution. I'm just kind of thinking of the different options there for that. It could be possible to do something similar to the Helm chart example where it's like WordPress dash chart where it's like snapshot dash tough or something that um, maybe isn't explicitly saved, but wouldn't be taken by another image. It's just the rest of those tags could be overwritten by anybody that wanted to do something unwise. Yeah, I guess so. But basically, a tag is a, the thing that the human in, interacts with and tells the system to interact with. All this other stuff, whether it be tough or signatures or helm, uh, sorry, uh, tough or signature or uh, SBOMs or GPL license packaging, those are all supportive information to the main thing. And the more you surface the supportive information, the more users go, delete, delete, copy, move, do, let me mess with. And it, it just becomes a nightmare. So I, I think we, that's part of what this new artifact manifest is about is 
supporting the extensibility we need with and telling the, letting the registry do the garbage collection and the reverse reference stuff, but not expose it to the user. And, and you know, so again, I, I applaud Dan for what he's done because there's a there's an article I've been meaning to write. Have you ever seen those videos where or pictures where there's a highway it goes through and there's a house right in the middle of the highway? It's you know the obvious thing is the house has got to go right that they lost, but it just didn't happen yet. And this is kind of the obvious thing, like Dan's created a great experience back and forth. And it's just, there's this one really, there's this house in the middle of the road that we just have to get rid of. So um, I, I think the, the question really here is, I'm hoping, um, like I'd like, love to get a little more feedback here. So I, I got a bunch of feedback um, and, I, and I was talking to Derek about it. So we were debating on this, um, the fact that there's now three collections. So if I can take this meeting for a second and get some feedback here, because this is the having to maintain an A and B, it makes it a little harder for us to move forward. So I definitely would like some feedback here. In this version, uh, sorry, in this version, we actually have three collections. There's a blobs, the, you know, the layers, nothing's changed there. Manifests, which says this is the optional thing, sorry, no, this is the reverse pointer at the things I want to point to. So in the example up here, I, that was the Helm chart, right? So in this example here, the notary V2 signature is pointing at the MySQL image. That's what this digest, uh, this descriptor is, right? The, and that's pretty straightforward. From a registry, we know how to read you know, the manifest. We'll know how to read the, this being the manifest and the manifest collection. We know how to read that. We know how to do it. It's a very strict, it's a very structured thing. In this option, what we're doing is we're also using manifests, but we have this additional annotation that says, I depend on. The relation, the OCI distribution relationship says this manifest depends on this descriptor. And so now a registry would need to not only parse this collection, which is fine, but we're also now digging into annotations for something specific to figure out how do we manage garbage collection. In and the reason for that is if you look at a helm chart, the helm chart has weak references to images. We want to store this information in a registry so we can do deep copies, optional deep copies, and we can optionally do deletes, and the deletes are obviously ref counted, um, but you don't have to do it, right? It's, this is like, this is the beauty of it is we're now introducing linkages between things. So in this case, what we're storing is, and I'll, and I'll use this example first, a Helm chart doesn't have any upward references, right? It's not pointing up, it's pointing down. So what it's saying is, here's the blob that makes up the Helm chart. The, and then the Helm chart references the WordPress 5 image and the MySQL image. But I've got it in this references section and that's how I'm making the distinction between a loose reference and a hard reference. In option A, you'll notice that there's an excuse me, an OCI distribution relationship that says references. So if we go with the two collection approach, now to do garbage collection, you've always got to look into this annotation um, where in the three collection approach, it's very straightforward. There, is, there either is a collection or not, and I don't have to go any deeper into it. Um, the, the ACR engineering team kind of was like, no, not at all interested in this because garbage collection is a, you know, uh, we, the amount of, and we all have this, right? I'm not trying to make point of one or the other. Any production registry has a lot of volume and we really have to be super fast in how we process and do garbage collection and process inbound and delete references in the well. So this was not well accepted. Um, and this was, we kind of, we've been pivoting back and forth here. I'm yeah, curious what others think, specifically like people that are running registries that have to deal with it. I can see if you don't have to deal with this problem, why it doesn't matter. Um, if you are, it kind of is important. I'm fortunate to not have to deal with the problem, but I also prefer the three type rather than the two type. Get that out of the annotation. I am curious, 
specifically on the example you got right now, you're saying like WordPress 5.7 and the annotation down there. And is that digest pointing to a digest that's in the current repository with the Helm chart? Keep. Or is that digest right, pointing to the digest? Shortcuts because I'm trying to mute my mic back and forth, and I'm having a. Um, no, so this is another area I need to explain more because this is I think this is also some of the questions you guys had over the weekend. What this is saying is um, this is giving a tag to this digest, but it is not assumed to be in the same repo. The reality is a digest is globally unique and we can find a digest anywhere in the registry. Whether it has permissions to it, it's a different question, but you have that problem in a Kubernetes deployment regardless, right? A Kubernetes deployment is always potentially referencing or Helm chart or anything, referencing multiple images. There's never a guarantee that auth is going to find all the things. However, if we put this in a manifest and if we want to deploy based on tag, I have another proposal about doing the mappings that says this tag is located in this repo. Because all of this is defined here, a client can say the scope of which that I'm operating right now, because the idea of the person pushing this thing into the chart is probably not the idea of the, the Kubernetes node that's doing the, the deployment. Does the scope of that thing doing deployment right now have read access to all of the artifacts in the graph? And now you would be able to figure that out. Um, so this split like this with the mapping concept allows me to either deploy by digest, you know, pin to a very specific digest or float on a stable tag. So you kind of get the best of both. Do I want to get the latest version of 5.7 in the current registry? Or do I say, I don't know what the latest is, if that's compatible with my deployment, so I can deploy on digest. Yeah, I'm thinking through the case of someone said, let me copy this entire Helm chart over. And Helm's a bad example, but I'll use it anyway. Um, and I'll need to go through each one of these references. And if that reference is not in the same repository, that copy would fail if I was doing a recursive copy through all the different components. Okay, so I was trying to find the copy command because I do have that copy here, the copy scenario in here. Uh, copy, here we go. Um, so there's, that's the standard push. And then you have the option of saying, oh, where do I have this example? Oh, here, OCI reg copy. I just totally hacked up an OCI reg. I, I haven't looked at all the other ones. I'm purposely trying to not pick one. Um, source, target. And then you would have the ability, did I put that example? Oh, I might have, I might have scrunched, uh, taken too much out. There was a, an example in this that said, uh, do deep copy. So you could basically say copy with references. Now the approach assumes that you've got, uh, where did I put this? Uh, no, probably every two, this is, uh, this is a silly place to have this discussion I recognize. Um, but this is this model here that says you can, where did I put that? Yeah. So you basically now have uh, a way to map where this, reg where this repo is in the current registry. Um, and this one, I'm not as prepared to talk about yet because the Red Hat folks are really interested in, we're, we're trying to reconcile the short name stuff that they've done, which was a great concept but turned out to be a big security hole because you have to search things fall through. This is intended to eliminate that. It is, it is a very deterministic resolution. So I can say I have two registries. I might have a base images registry and I have my apps registry. And now I can say the WordPress is in my base registries and charts. So it, it very explicitly can find it. And what this allows us to do is um, if you think about the way we have our, uh, images, right? We build, the concept is you build the image once, test it in dev, you don't change it, you test it in staging and deploy it in production. You're just changing the config you pass to it. Why is it that a chart has to also be changed as it goes through because it's making references? Now, if I have a chart that says, I depend a WordPress image and it depends on these two, sorry, a WordPress chart, it depends on the WordPress image and the MySQL image, I should be able to very easily move that chart through the environment. 
The problem is, is that we've kind of left that to the Helm team to go do with their internals. And there's no way to generalize that in a registry. So we wind up with a very fractured experience. Well, and from an Azure, I can tell you this hit us directly. We went around and cleaned up all the references to um, uh, our services were dependent on Docker Hub and GCR and Quay and, and stuff. And then, so we got all of that into MCR. So now our own services aren't dependent on externals, but we saw that our internal service teams and certainly our customers would go take the Nginx Helm chart and they put the Nginx Helm chart in their registry, but it referenced the Nginx image from some other place. So we really want to make this super simple so that you can define this and it just, it just works. Um, so this is still a work in progress. I, I actually have it to do to follow up with uh, Mila. I think it was Mila that uh, connected me with everybody. And I just haven't had a chance to follow up with everybody yet. Mila, do you want to chime in here? Throw them on there. Not much. <laughs> I think I'm very, very much on board with the idea of mapping uh, images and deployment type. I just don't think that it needs a separate syntax and the references just should be fully qualified with some default location. But we've been through that many times. So this is this is the the you know, I am sure this idea will evolve, and that's why I'm not as ready to present it yet. But back to the question that you were asking, Brandon, was this uh, let me scroll back up to the helm chart example getting lost in my own document. Table of contents would be super helpful here. Um, the Helm chart, here we go. Yeah. The Does idea here a... is that instead of having a baked in fully qualified path, is that now I have a named reference that this manifest doesn't change no matter what registry it's in. The only thing it changes is you know a, a client mapping that says, by the way, that WordPress chart doesn't even come from this registry. It comes from something completely different because I'm managing two different registries in my environment. Yeah, so to me, what this saying is, if I was to implement a copy that wasn't built into a registry server or something else, some external command, that in addition to uh, going through that those list of digests, I also need to expand those annotations and look for that one annotation to see if I need to query a different repository for the same digest. Yeah, so this is, um, if you looked at a previous version of the OCI, OCI artifact manifest, I actually had expanded descriptor to have some other properties in it. And again, you know, descriptors have done as well so far. So this is where I move these two annotations. The, I, I think, I don't have this fully baked yet. This is why I want more feedback. So the, this is one, and I think I, at least I heard from one or two people here that they like the option B model of this. So there's a, a separate collection. The question here is, what do we do around this name? And I think this one is, we just need more time to bake on it. I think to your point, until I get this other conversation happening, uh, where'd it go? This one, I, it, it's hard to really visualize how that gets solved. So I, I don't have a great answer. So right now I'm just making sure that we, this already is as part of the di, uh, descriptor. The digest is already part of the descriptor. So that's already there. This is an additional piece of information that can be used. Whether we formalize that and move this up into a, an enhanced descriptor, I'm not ready to commit. I don't have enough feedback from people to say one way or the other. Yeah, my own knee jerk is to say we wouldn't allow references to stuff that's outside of the current repository, but I'll leave that up to people that actually have to run the registries. So I, I hear that a lot. Can you elaborate on that? It, it just kind of takes your entire security concept to a single reference you don't have to think about. Are you, are you having to re-authenticate to another re registry you might not have originally had authentication to, and I have two different user IDs pulling this image around. Um, but also I'm just all thinking of all your garbage collection scenarios. Now you have to keep track of garbage collection between two different repositories. It just seems like it gets a lot more complicated. I can't agree anymore. I agree so, so much.
I, I'm just, I'm trying to get some space for some others. Cause like, if you look at a deployment, a deployment in any kind of environment always deploys images from multiple repos. Not That's not true. But it, it definitely does in many cases. If I'm deploying a set of services, I'm deploying the MySQL image, the help, the WordPress image, those aren't in the same repo. Those are in separate repos. And you know, totally. whether it be my marketing app is gonna have a set of services from multiple teams. So I feel like Helm is a bad example because you can template those image names and everything gets kind of crazy when you mix a template of value in addition to putting it in this format that's not templated. So changing examples in the CNAB spec today, isn't that all pushed into one big object that's all in the same repository? You just push all of your images up together in the same repository? It is, but I would say it's actually along the lines of what Dan's trying to do. It's a workaround around what exists today. Like even they're even stuffing things in an image because Docker Hub doesn't support anything other than that yet. So yep. they're definitely in the, I'm going to plow through what exists today because I don't want to take a dependency on something that doesn't exist yet. But I can tell you from a, you know, a customer deployments, whether it be Helm charts or Kube deploy, people are deploying things from multiple repos. And it doesn't matter whether you want to get two repo namespaces like the org thing or with ACR and some others that we can go all the way up to 256 characters, it doesn't matter. Uh, the people deploy across multiple repos now, and they also deploy across multiple registries. We see the multiple registries less. I think we'll see those more over time. So it's not a matter of um, convenience because to your point, the other point, if you try to stuff everything in the same repo, now that we're supporting different artifact types, now you got to start playing this game with tag names also. Um, and there's no formality to it because it's just a string. Um, so I, I think, my, I guess my opinion is, I, I don't know if we can force people to keep things in the same repo because we think it's convenient because the reality is they're already doing this. If we try to fight it, we're just, we're blocking the, we're forcing them to try to stuff things in the same repo or force them to put them across multiples. Honestly, we even have, I'm looking to see if he's here. Um, we have this argument with the multi-arc stuff. We're seeing a lot of the library images and even our .NET team has been fighting this a bit. Um, they want to put the different architectures in different repos because it's just too hard to manage multi-arc images, uh, the, the image index. Is it? I, I think a couple it's of us- easier to manage having multiple repo artifacts is easier than, uh, uh, I don't know. That, how does this solve that, I guess, is my question. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different thing because you're not pulling the Windows and Linux image at the same time. So to be fair, it's not exactly the same problem. My point is that people are seeing the multiple repos of being a, a better way to separate things, even for things that shouldn't have to, like multi-arc. I'd argue you're right. We should just fix the multi-arc, multi, the index collection tooling so it's easier to deal with. I, I think people get confused by multi-arc stuff because it's slightly complicated where you have one extra layer pointing to multiple things, but it's all in the same repo. I worry that a single artifact that can reference like multiple repos and multiple kinds of things, uh, I mean, that's just making the problem worse, I think. Why is it making, if, if people are already doing that today, how are we making it worse? And, and the, I don't think way, they're already they doing that today. It out. So the manifests, just to be really clear, the manifest collection, like a signature, let me go back up to the signature example. Uh, the signature example where this is a notary V2 signature, enhancements to an artifact, I have said absolutely have to be in the same repo. For all the security part, it's not just the security, it's, it, it doesn't make sense for a thing that is, it, that is a thing is split across multiple locations. And I'm quite frankly, I'm throwing the Windows foreign layers under the bus on this one, right? The fact that the layers come from someplace else is just ridiculous. And we always knew it was ridiculous. It was a legal requirement. As I mentioned in another call, we're, we're really close to getting rid of that requirement. But that's actually the, the reason we're trying to get rid of it in a way. We want everything that holistically makes up a thing must be in the same repo. The idea with references is these are weak references, loose references, whatever the term you want to call, 
the Helm chart can exist on its own. The images can exist on its own. The fact that I have a weak reference that says, by the way, these things do make up each other and I can find them is an enhancement, but it's not a blocker because the image might be in another registry altogether and you resolve it through the mappings. So I, I'm trying to at least address the concern that says, yes, if you don't have auth to both things, fine, you don't get the two things, you don't get the brother and sister, right? But they do exist on their own. It's just there's ex ex uh, experiences where you need them both. If you need them both, you're gonna need them both anyway. And the role that has to pull them both, because we have it defined in a manifest, you can do a pre-check and says, hey, do I have access to all these things? And if no, the deployment will fail because before it even starts. My inclination, trying to find the right words for this stuff, is to say that the artifact, maybe it just shouldn't even include those at all. That if it's something that the Helm chart is saying, hey, I've got reference to external stuff, then maybe that shouldn't be part of the artifact itself. The artifact should say, here's a Helm chart, here's how you look up all the details of the Helm chart, and then go into that to figure out everything else. But when you author the Helm chart, you're saying, and I just keep on using the WordPress images, maybe some other ones, but if I, I have, uh, it's two images, the MySQL and the Helm chart. I just say that these are the things that make it up. I'm not saying when I author the Helm chart, how you might want to store them. I'm giving you the flexibility to say, by the way, in my, in my environment, I store my Helm charts in one place. I store my base images in one registry because those don't change. And then my app code is in the, the engineering team's registry. So you kind of like, if you have 20 divisions at a company, they're all referencing the Nginx image from the same one. But their app is specific to their team. Yeah, I, okay. I'm not selling you yet. It's okay. I, I, I'm just thinking how I'd write both the registry code and client code for this, and I don't want to. Well, the beauty of the registry, the registry doesn't care about references. It's, I think it has to. Why? Because those are the down references. You don't want to garbage collect the down reference when there's but still something above it that's pointing to it. Registry never, that's the beauty of this one. The registry would never do garbage collection on it. The client can say, by the way, when I'm deleting the Helm chart, I actually do want to delete the MySQL and uh, Helm chart, that MySQL and WordPress image. And then the registry will just treat those as independent deletes and do its normal garbage collection, your know, reference counting and so forth. The, so the up. blobs and manifest, those follow all this. The a registry has to know about blobs and manifests because these do get deleted. And to be fair, it's not, you don't delete the signature that deletes the manifest. You're deleting the manifest and you do a reverse lookup to know you delete the signature. So with all these, is there a way just by looking at the schema to know that when an image gets deleted that you would delete the artifact or vice versa? Or do you have to go a layer deeper and know which artifact type and have custom code per artifact type? Awesome. No, that's exactly why we've got this thing. That's why I've got option B is if it's a blob, if it's a manifest, well, remember the manifest is reverse reference. When this manifest is being asked to be deleted, this thing always gets deleted. But you wouldn't actually delete this first. What you're going to is when the MySQL image gets deleted. This, because I've added this enhancement to the MySQL image, the MySQL image is keeping a reference to this. And I, I know I need to elaborate this more. There's this reverse lookup thing. So the MySQL image picked up this manifest because it's referenced here. And now when the MySQL image is deleted, this manifest is deleted. When this manifest is deleted, this blob and this config is deleted. It doesn't do anything to the references. Okay. It's totally up to the client to decide if it wants to walk that references tree and independently ask for that thing to be deleted because those are independent objects. And we're at time. Yep, we already lost John too. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we, did we lose Dan also? So anyway, so thanks folks. This is, this, this is the conversation that um, you know, we need, it helps to do in person because there's an iterative, if you've been watching this, this is 
have been evolving a lot because of this feedback. Some of it is just like elaborating a little bit more. Some of it is just changing the names, like manifest is the newest name because it just makes sense now. Um, I will keep iterating on this this week, respond to all the questions that came up in the listing API, get the Harbor folks involved so that we can get them into that list of requirements and we'll continue to make progress. With that, we'll wrap up for the week and thank you. Thank you.